A Thrive uh, and those who are, are just spending some time with us tonight, first of all, thank you. Thanks for uh, spending your evening or just a few minutes of it, at least here with us as we come together as a church to uh, just have a quick devotional thought and to pray together. And um, I, I'd, I'd ask you, make sure to sign in there to the right so that we know that you're, you're with us. Right now, it's so important for us to keep in contact with one another. But also, would you put in there any prayer requests that you might have? And we'll be praying with you along right now, even as um, this time goes. And before we get into uh, God's Word here for, for, for just a moment, I don't know about you, but... At this point, hanging out in the house all the time, or at least a bunch of the time, as we should be, uh, you tend to go a bit stir crazy. The news is dark, and uh, we're, we're kind of cramped up here together. I'll tell you what, we had a night the other night at the Bolin household where it seemed like everybody within about an hour said, I'm going for a walk, and we all had to go for one alone. Just because being this close, a lot of times we're not, not accustomed to it, or being inside uh, we're not accustomed to this, or uh, just even the, the the heaviness of all of the news catches us a bit off guard. And we go, how are we supposed to, to think? How are we supposed to process? How are we supposed to respond um, in uncertain and stressful times like this? I came across a devotional uh, as I was, I was reading the other day that uh, really spoke to me and um, I'd like to share it with you and just, just some thoughts uh, as we go through it. If you've got a Bible, would you open it to Psalm 57? Psalm 57. Um, Psalms, Psalms offer not only a prayer book, but a song book and a way that tells us it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to lament. It's okay to, to cry out to God in difficult times. So tonight, we're going to get, um, we'll call it medicine from a cave. We're going to step into a cave when King David, or he wasn't King David yet, he was still David, who was going to be king, uh, hid inside of a cave from uh, Saul. So his life was endangered and he was hiding out. And in that time, he wrote Psalm 57. And I think it, it, it has a bit to say to us in the situation that we're in tonight. Because what's it look like for you and I to trust God as our refuge, trust God in times like this? How are we supposed to respond? As David says, I take refuge in the shadow of your wings. What's that look like in, in, in our world? So Psalm 57, Let, let's pray uh, before we get into it, and then I'm just going to read the few, first few verses. Father, I thank you for this time. And I ask that you would speak to us, that you would encourage us, would you remind us important truth today. In Christ's name and for his church. Amen. Psalm 57. Be gracious to me, God. Be gracious to me. For I take refuge in you. I will seek refuge in the shadow of your wings until danger passes. I call to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He reaches down from heaven and saves me, challenging the one who tramples me. God sends his faithful love and truth. That's not the sort of thing that I, I would expect if I were to open a, a, a letter that was written from someone who was hiding out in a cave and trying to figure out how they were going to get by. But the first thing we, we, we've got to get as we open this, open this is that David here rest in the truth of who God is and what he's done. He's not focusing so much on the problem as he is on the one who who is and is and is to come is what the scriptures say the one who is above coronavirus and the one who's bigger than any problems that you and i face and notice in verse one be gracious to me god be gracious to me i'll tell you what right now i recognize my need for god's grace more than ever 
times when we're not allowed to operate as we typically do and the times where I snap at my kids or at my wife or uh, I'm thankful that God is merciful and that God's gracious even in these times. But I'm also thankful, look at verse 2, that God will fulfill the purpose that he has for me. And he fulfills the purpose that he has for you. God didn't get thrown off by what you and I are facing right now. It's Ephesians 2.10 say that we, uh, that he prepared good works for us in advance in light of coronavirus in light of COVID-19, he prepared a church. And what he has planned for us didn't slow down even a moment. He fulfills the purpose that he has for me and he's fulfilling the purpose that he has for you. God's bigger than this. And that's why we have to continually focus on who God is and what he's done rather than focusing on the problem, or maybe we look at it like this. We view coronavirus through the lens of who God is and what he's done, rather than we view God through the lens of coronavirus. But that's not it, though. Look at also, he sent from heaven and saved me. Verse 3 there. He saved us. Even in the middle of, of this sort of struggle, we need to focus on this, that God didn't just go, oh my, how am I going to deal with this? He entered into the scene. He entered into the pain. In the person of Jesus Christ, he lived so that you and I might have life eternal, so that we can have life forever with him. What a gift that is. And right now, I don't know about you, but I, I, my mind turns to those more eternal things, even in light of the present struggles. And I go, man, I am so thankful for the cross. Thankful that God is gracious and that he, his purposes won't be uh, held up and that he's saved even the likes of me. Skip down, though. To verse, to verse 10 and 11. I'm going to skip to where uh, David ends this because it's part of what we need to understand here and who God is and what he's done. For your faithful love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches the clouds. God be exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be over the whole earth When everything around us, when the news gives uh, um, these pictures of how tough things are getting, the thing that I need to know most and the thing that you need to know most is that his love and his faithfulness are rock solid and they never change. Yeah, but let's, let, let's, don't, let's don't stop there. Let's keep going. Verse 4. I'm surrounded by lions. I lie down among roaring lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp words. God be exalted among the heavens. Let your glory be over the whole earth. They prepared a net for my steps. I was despondent. They dug a pit ahead of me, but they fell in it. My heart is confident, God. My heart is confident. I will sing. I will sing praises. Wake up my soul. Wake up harp and lyre. I will wake up the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to you among the nations. Think about this in light of what David is experiencing. He's hiding out for his life. In light of what he's experiencing, he turns his eyes to God. And then he responds here. He responds in faith based on who God is and what God's done. He cries out, honestly, if you look at verses 4 and 6 there, um, I'm surrounded by uh, roaring lions and down in, in 6. They've done this and they're, they're, they're attacking me. 
He's honest about the scenario. And you and I need to, to get this. It's okay to be honest in prayer. Sometimes we feel like we have to be so holy or act like things aren't there, but that doesn't represent a large portion of the Psalms. They're honest. Honestly, they're, they're, they're overly honest at times, and you go, gosh, are, are we even allowed to pray that way? And you get into these Psalms that we'll call lament, and I, we're going to talk a bit more of that as the, the weeks go by. But this it's not a gripe to God. Hear me on this. A lament is the struggle we feel and the struggle we, this tension that we go through because we know who God is. And yet we experience these struggles. So we cry out and we're honest about our situation. We're honest about the stuff that we go to. But then notice in, in verse 7, in spite of the problems, it says, my heart is confident, God. My heart is confident. In other words, he repeats this for, emph for emphasis. Uh, in, in light of the struggles, I'm confident in who you are. I'm confident that the church will be together again. I'm confident that, that things may not look quite the same but that we will be together. I'm confident that God wins. I'm confident that the people that he's put, uh, the scientists and those that, that he's provided for us are going to get us through this. And I'm confident. I'm confident that the gospel's going to go forward in incredible ways. I'm confident above that, uh, or above everything else that that's going to be the case. Because of that, we can trust we trust that God's plans won't change. And because of that, look at verse 8 and 9. 8 and 9, wake up my soul, wake up my uh, uh, wake up harp and lyre, I'll wake up the dawn. See, he responds in the middle of struggle with praise. By singing. That, that blows my mind because oftentimes we want to focus on our struggles so bad that we, we forget. Singing, worship, reminds us. It draws us up above the problem and it draws us into, into the place where God would have his people to be in the middle of struggle. Verses 8 and 9. In the middle of that praise, he's hoping for the future. Because we can praise because we're going to get through this. The thing that we see here, Struggles happen, but God's bigger than that. The struggles come, and honestly, they'll come again, but they're not going to last. And at the end, our, our hope in Jesus never changes. The love that God has for us never flinches for a moment. He's with us. He's got us through this. And because of that, we can praise Amy Carmichael was a uh, uh, missionary to, to China a long time ago. She wrote, uh, um, I think one of, the Dave, uh, one of the devil's favorite devices is to try to make us dwell on the hardness of things in general and make us feel as if they'll always go on like this. But they will not. They are a shadow that will pass. The shadows pass, but Jesus doesn't. That's confidence, church. That's, that's the confidence that we can have as we go through these kinds of struggles. So let's take a few minutes and let's, let's pray together. Let's pray. Um, let's praise. Let's go to God on behalf of each other and on behalf of all those who are struggling with this right now. Would you pray with me? Think about this as we go. What, what an opportunity. We're not together, but yet we are. All across the southwest side of Indy right now and even a few other places, there are people who trust Jesus for salvation who are going to him together just to pray just to recognize who he is, 
and intercede for those who he loves. Pray with me. Father, we come to you not on any merit of our own, but we come to you through the shed blood of your Son, knowing that that we come to you and know you as a dad and a father. Even in the middle of difficult times, we know that your love for us doesn't change. We know that your plans for us don't change and we can praise you. So we do. We praise you in the middle of the storm and we praise you in the middle of COVID-19 and uh, all of the struggles that our land and this world is, are, are experiencing right now. We praise you because your love is steadfast and our future is secure. Thank you. Thank you that you have provided for us in this way. Thank you for even the opportunity for us to to be together, to pray in this sort of way. And thank you most of all that we are not left alone, that we have your Holy Spirit with us. We have your son's life who who was given for us. And we have a father that loves us. Lord, we think of those who are struggling now who are sick and uh, uh, dealing with the struggles of COVID-19, God, would you, would you be with them? Would you heal them? Would you sustain their body and spirit even today? Lord, we lift up uh, those in our population who are vulnerable we, we think of, of those, um, uh, the elderly. We think of those who have um, ongoing conditions. And Lord, we ask that you would be with them and protect them even now. Lord, we ask for a sense of uh, commitment even when we don't want to quarantine or, or isolate right now. Lord, we ask that you would remind us to think wisely and to act wisely. Lord, we we lift up our government and both here at the state and local level, but then as a federal level as well. And we ask that you would give them wisdom and resources uh, to act wisely and to govern us well in these times and to, to Bring us through these these uncharted times. Lord, for those, the, the scientific community who are so hard at work right now, working and uh, uh, trying to come up with a solution, Lord, we ask that you would guide them. We ask that you would give them knowledge and wisdom and a persuasive voice today. Lord, for um, those of us who are, who are just taking in a whole lot of media right now and a whole lot of news, uh, trying to be informed, God, would you help us to think wisely, to view news through the lens of who you are and what you are doing. Lord, for uh, we lift up the homeless Now, those who uh, don't have the opportunity to practice um, self-quarantining, Lord, we just ask that you would protect and that you would provide for them in a special way, even today. For the uh, missionaries, Lord, who are around the world, God, I pray a protection for them. I think of many friends who are in different places right now and dealing with uh, struggles that are greater than, than ours. Lord, would you protect your servants even now? Be with them today. Lord, for those who are working in industries that can't uh, take a break, for our medical workers, Lord, Would you protect them, protect their families? 
Give them energy and strength. Give them wisdom and encouragement. I think of the, a lot of times it's young, younger and elderly who are working in our grocery stores. God, would you, would you be with them in a special way? Keep them safe through this. Those who are working at places like Amazon and warehouses that are, are going so strong right now. Lord, would you be with them and keep them safe? Give them energy that is beyond their own capabilities and um, just a sense of calm and commitment even as we have to face this. Lord, for families who um, are dealing with child care struggles, Lord, we ask that you would provide and protect Lord, for your church, we ask that you would give us a resolve to be wise, but to be committed to mission more than ever. Give us a vision for who you are. Help us in these times to prioritize our prayer life and hearing from you through your word, but also acting in ways of love justice, mercy. Lord, help us to be the church that you would have us to be. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we'll leave the, the chat on there for a bit and we'll be happy and, and honored to pray together. Um, so even if this is maybe your first time here, today and you don't know what to think and you're looking for answers and you don't even know how to pray reach out there i would love i would love to tell you about a hope that's bigger than the struggles that we're facing today and a hope that will give you peace and calm in the middle of any storm i'd love to just tell you about jesus thanks church have a good evening